you would like to complete this Akatar inspired spring court postage stamp embroidery project, then keep on watching. The first step is to print off the pattern. The pattern also comes along with written instructions on how to complete this project. I'll have it linked in the description below. Once you've printed off the pattern, it's time to assemble your hoop and your fabric. Place your fabric within the hoop and then pull on the edges to make sure the fabric is taut. You want to make sure there are no weird tension areas. It should just be a flat surface of fabric. The next step is to trace the pattern onto the fabric. I like to keep the fabric in the hoop for this step because it stays nice and taut. I also like to use my iPad for this step. Some people have these really cool things called light boxes which basically just shine a light upwards and allow you to place a pattern onto the box. And they basically just illuminate the pattern, making it really easy for you to see the darker lines, which then makes it easier for you to trace onto your fabric. I use a specific kind of pencil for this because they need to be very, very sharp and fine lined. I have these specific pencils linked in the shopping list on the downloadable PDF instructions. This step is really important. You want to make sure you get every single line, every single indent, because this is going to be our guide when we're stitching later. Try to keep pressure on your hoop when you're doing this just to make sure it doesn't slide around on the paper. I don't have any experience with the hoop and the fabric sliding around on the paper. It usually sits in one place very nicely. Don't be afraid to rotate your hoop and your design. Just make sure that the paper comes with you and it doesn't move from its spot. You want to make sure that you're getting really, really clean lines when you're tracing. This is because we're not using an erasable pen or a embroidery specific marker. We're just using regular pencils. So these lines aren't going to be erased afterwards. They're just gonna be covered by the embroidery. So that's why we have to use a very, very sharp fine point pencil. And we have to be very, very specific with the marks that we're making. This is what you should be left with when you're done with your tracing. And now we're gonna go in with some watercolor pencils to do the shading of the landscape. I have these specific watercolor pencils linked in the PDF. In order to use these watercolor pencils, you will need to slightly dampen your fabric. Notice I say slightly, we do not want this fabric to be super wet. The watercolor pigment will run and it will go just all over the fabric and spots where you don't want it to go if you get the fabric too wet with this spray. So the first color I'm gonna use is gonna be this light blue color for the sky. The thing that's most important when coloring with these watercolor pencils is to make sure you stay within the lines and you don't go outside of the border lines for the specific color you're using. So obviously I don't wanna color outside of the postage stamp border and I don't want to go over the hill borders below the sky. The clouds don't matter so much and neither does the sun since we are going to be stitching over those with embroidery thread. We're not gonna be using any any other watercolor pencils to color those in, but I still like to keep those borders as tidy as I can. Once I'm done with the sky, I'm gonna go in with the color I'm using on the bottom hill. As you can see, there are three hills. There's one in the background, one kind of in the background on the side, and then there's one at the bottom of the postage stamp where the flowers are growing. And each of these I'm gonna do in a different color just to convey that the other ones are in the distance and they're not the same hill. It's important to try and focus your water spray on the area that you are gonna be working on immediately after spraying because the water does dry out quite quickly. So when you're spraying a new area after finishing coloring in an area, you want to cover that area that you recently colored with a piece of scrap paper or paper towel before spraying the new area that you're gonna be working on. This is just gonna make sure that the watercolor doesn't spread, doesn't seep into other areas of the embroidery pattern. Watercolor pencils are usually very pigmented and it's really easy for them to seep and travel further than what you want them to. And that would really ruin this design. So just be really, really careful with this when spraying extra water onto the piece.
Don't be afraid to go back in with your fine line pencil and go over some of the lines that you traced earlier. They're not going to be as easy to see through the watercolor pencil pigment, but if you did a really good job when you were tracing earlier, then this shouldn't be a problem. They still should be very visible. I recommend adding an extra layer of fabric behind this first layer before you go into stitch. This is just so that you can't see any of the threads behind the fabric once it's done. I know that some of the cheaper cotton fabrics out there are sometimes a little bit see-through, so I like to just do this as a just-in-case kind of measure. So the first thing we're going to be stitching is the outer border of the postage stamp. This is going to be one of the most time consuming parts of this process, just because you really want to make sure you're doing a neat and tidy job because it really will affect the finished product. All of the stitches, the thread counts and the thread colors that I will be using in this video are going to be listed in the downloadable embroidery PDF. I'm going to be using a combination of straight stitches and wide mouth lazy daisy stitches for the outer border. For the curved indents of the border, you're just going to stick the needle up through at the edge and then back down through at the other edge of the curved indent. Pull the thread a little bit taut but leave some of it loose. Then we're going to stick the needle back up through the fabric at the peak of the indent and then thread that needle through the thread that you left earlier and then pull that taut. It should create a curved shape. Then you're going to go back in and create some more little anchor stitches. Anchor stitches are basically just very, very tiny straight stitches that you can use to pull and contort the thread to areas that you want it to stay. Once you're done with the outer border, you're going to move into the inner border of the postage stamp. I like to use long straight stitches for the inner border, and then I like to anchor that long straight stitch five or six times with tiny anchor stitches. So I'm going to do that for all four of the lines of the inner border of the postage stamp. This was the first postage stamp embroidery project that I did, so I kind of did the embroidery order a little bit differently than I have it listed on the downloadable PDF, but I went in and I started stitching the cloud first. And for the clouds, I'm just using French knot stitches, and I'm using four strands of embroidery thread just to get a little bit more of a 3D effect. Then randomly I go in and I stitch the sun using a satin stitch and then I just use straight stitches for the sun rays. Then I go and finish off the rest of the clouds with the French knot stitches. And then sadly, I realized my camera was not recording me when I was stitching the text in the top right corner of the postage stamp, but I basically just used couch stitch and straight stitches for the tiny little text letters. To see me stitching some tiny letters like that, I will have more of the projects linked in the description of this video. Then I move on to the outline borders of the hills that we colored in earlier. I'm just using the couch stitch for these, and I'm making sure to use thread colors that match with the colors that we used to shade in the landscape earlier. I'm then going to go in and start stitching the stems and the leaves of the florals at the bottom of the stamp. I'm using quite a few different colours of greens and then I'll be using quite a few different bolder colours for the flowers and for the pollen on these flowers. And all of those specific thread colours are again listed within the PDF.
I like to overlap my stitches for the flowers because it makes them look a little bit 3D, makes them stand out from the fabric a little bit. I often like to do the same thing with the leaves as well, as you can tell they are sitting up quite nicely on the fabric. We're going to be doing some more French knot stitches for some of the bud accents on these flowers and also for the pollen in the middle of the daisies. When you're done with your spring court postage stamp embroidery project, you should be left with a little something like this. I really hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, and if you have, I would love it if you would let me know in the comments. Again, I will have this pattern linked in the description below, as well as other videos for other postage stamp embroideries. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in my next video.